In this segment, we're going to talk about the kinds of features that we might use in NER systems. So the general form of these features, we've defined uh, to follow this transition and emission framework that we set up for hidden Markov models. These potentials can actually be quite flexible. Um, so there's models called neural CRFs that can actually incorporate neural networks into this process. Um, and there's generally lots of ways to do this. Um, again, here we're going to look at the case of sparse linear functions. And so these are going to extract features based on uh, the arguments to each of these things. So the emissions are going to look at the current tag yi, the position i, and the overall sequence x. Uh, and the transitions are going to look at an, only an adjacent pair of tags uh, yi minus 1, yi. You could have transition features that look at, uh, that look at x as well um, and are generally more involved, but we're not going to do that. Uh, and then once we specialize the uh, CRF to this case, we get this formula. All right, so the basic idea behind these features is that when we're thinking about uh, tagging Hangzhou here as B lock, there's a couple of things that are important. The first is the transitions really need to look at what the previous tag was. And so what we use here is an indicator feature on the pair of tags. Now, remember that indicator features, we basically take this information and we stick it into what we can think of as like a bag of words space, but very extended. Um, and so there's going to be some weight associated with this particular feature. And this is going to help us encode how likely B lock is to follow O. And more importantly, it's going to encode things like how likely I lock is to follow B lock, which can capture things like, you know, how good is it to have a multi word location? Um, and, you know, these transitions can also, if you don't enforce this in uh, your actual inference, capture things like B lock to uh, I person cannot happen because that's, that's uh, a transition that's just never observed in the training set. All right, the emissions are really the workhorse of NER though, because these are what are, what's going to allow us to look at the words and say, okay, what kind of named entity is this? Or is it a named entity? And so calling back to the ideas that we talked about when we introduced uh, tagging with, classif with classifiers, we can look at conjoining the label B lock here with the identity of the current word. And so if we've seen Hangzhou in our training data, which may be a bit of a stretch to imagine, but if we have and we've seen it as a location, this feature should have positive weight and then is going to encourage us to make this prediction here as well. All right, here's a more useful feature, and this is why context is really important for NER. This is an indicator of B lock being at this current position and the previous word being the word two. Now notice that we, we needed to look at yi for this to get B lock, and we needed to look at the, the, uh, the sequence x kind of indexed using i in order to say, okay, what was the word that came before this at the i minus one position? So this is a feature extractor that's possible in our framework, uh, you know, and generally is going to be very useful for identifying locations. All right, so a good exercise to think about is you can look at some various different uh, instances of named entities in text and think about what sorts of features both within the named entity as well as context features might allow you to determine what type it is and uh, you know, whether or not it's there. I encourage you to go through that exercise. We are going to now, I'm just going to list off some of the most common features that get used. Uh, so you can use features that are internal to a given word. And, and technically, these can be integrated into HMMs as well. We haven't built up the machinery to do that, um, but it is possible. Uh, you can look at things like capitalization, so-called word shape, like where are the capital letters? Are there numbers in this word or punctuation or things like that? Um, hyphenation is, is another cue. Um, you can look at prefixes and suffixes of the word. Um, for example, ton or sure at the end of Leicestershire. These are things that look like locations, right? Um, 
because of their the the kind of etymology and, and morphology of these uh, of these terms. And finally, uh, lexical indicators, which is just a fancy way of saying features that look at the whole word. Um, so this kind of uh, B lock and current word equals Leicestershire, that kind of thing. Then context features, are, again, are going to be one of the really important things. We can look at multiple words on either side. We can look at all these same word features associated with the words before and after. And we can also look at part of speech tags if we do something like run a part of speech tagger and then run an NER system. Uh, and word clusters uh, is another useful idea, word clusters or word embeddings, um, and gazetteers, which are just like lists of named entities scraped from a resource like Wikipedia. These are all going to be useful features that uh, get leveraged in our NER models. And the idea here is just to show the flexibility of what CRFs allow us to do uh, in order to motivate why these are going to be so effective for this task. That's the end of this segment.